Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again. I am back in dreams for PS4 after a short break and am ready to tell you about some tips I've gathered while working on things lately. We're going to start with a set of lighting tips that's a little different than you might expect. Let's get to it. This is a demo scene I've been working on for my collection Abandoned Industrial Mark II, which I will be promoting at the upcoming DreamsCom 21. As you can see, this is a pretty dark world and scene. My sky brightness is rather low, and that results in some areas that do not seem to correctly interact with the scene's ambient light, and are also not readily resolved with diffuse lights. In a scene like this, we want to retain as much contrast and shadow as possible while brightening up certain objects, so their surface details are more readily apparent. One option you might reach for is turning up the sky brightness, but you'll notice when we do that we immediately start losing those good shadows that give us an overall sense of darkness and foreboding. In addition, that will cause certain things to start looking glowy. One reason for that is that perception of materials is relative. I have two sculpts next to each other that are different in materials. The brick walls are rougher, and the metal panels are more metallic. This makes the metal panel look very dark. If I increase metalness, the brightness normalizes compared to the brick. When you do this, you'll likely need to adjust shininess to keep the object looking like the material you want. On the opposite end of the spectrum, your sculpt can be too relatively waxy next to the other sculpts. This can cause sculpts to look glowy and give them a hovering or two-dimensional look. In those situations, increasing metalness will normalize the relative brightness, and then you'll likely want to make the object rougher to retain the look of the intended material. In the case of this sculpt, roughness is already at 100%, so it's probably a good habit to leave some leeway on either end of a slider when designing sculpts or bringing them into a scene. Sometimes relative material darkness combines with a dark spot in the scene to reduce the sculpt to a featureless mass. This would occur in spots you want to keep dark, so a light is not an adequate solution. However, you still want the viewer to be able to get a hint of what is there. This is like the last couple of scenarios, but you'll need to adjust materials even more in the appropriate direction. Now these tips are going to be most effective in scenes with static lights. If your character has a flashlight, for instance, you're going to illuminate these various objects and their odd materials will be apparent. You can still use these techniques in those cases, but you want to be more conservative. Let's say you have a sculpt in a dark area and you're happy with how dark the object is, but you want to give more of a hint of its presence. You can increase shininess and give it a crisper highlight. To accomplish this, you'll need to have the sculpt within range of a light, though. Along the same lines, you can fake edge lighting by appropriately adjusting both material sliders on a sculpt that is near the edge of the range of a light. To take this from complete darkness to what looks like illumination from below, you're going to need to move toward waxiness and shininess quite a bit. A couple of things to keep in mind, if a new light enters that area, this material could end up looking out of place, and also you'll need quite a bit of headroom in waxiness and shininess to begin with in order to make a significant impact. Combining these concepts, we can do some interesting things with existing lighting and groups of sculpts in order to enhance overall scene lighting. Here I'm working with a staircase comprised of about 20 sculpts, which is near a spotlight, a diffuse light, and a light emitting glow sculpt at the bottom, and near two diffuse lights at the top. To improve these situations, you'll need to use your imagination a little, but you can probably identify several problem areas at a glance just because they don't look right. After you have identified your problem areas, you can then adjust the materials of the various sculpts to fill in where light simply isn't showing up. You can also do things like increase shininess on sculpts that are interacting with spotlights. This is desirable because spotlights tend to wash things out and reduce contrast. Increasing shininess will boost specular highlights and reinforce some of the contrast you lost from the spotlight.
Here's another example of correcting for lighting weirdness in an area with some complex lighting where another light doesn't quite cut it because it's an area that the player can walk directly through. The first issue is that this machine is not hovering, but rather sitting on a pedestal that none of these lights are reaching. This is rectified by lowering metalness. Uh, it's worth pointing out here that the height of brightness on the waxiness metalness slider for this technique is 0% and not 100% waxy. The second issue is that one of our gears is inordinately dark. This is because there are lights on either side of this machine, but to illuminate this gear with a light would require a fairly bright light in the path of the player with no apparent source. We'll use the same techniques as before to correct this. Lastly, we want to make the gauges more apparent. These are worth pointing out because they're currently illuminated by different types of light. The gauge on the left has a spotlight on it, so we deal with it like we did earlier, mainly by increasing shininess to boost the specular highlight. The gauge on the right is lit by a diffuse light, and so we lower metalness and then adjust shininess accordingly like we did at the beginning of the video. This is a real example in a scene I am currently working on, so you can see you can very realistically run into these various types of adjustments in a single spot. I think this one is really cool. If you have a series of surfaces that are only visible from one side, like a set of shelves and uh, a light on one side of them, you can fake lighting occlusion and diffusion by changing materials. So first of all, you're going to need headway available away from 0% on the waxiness metalness slider in order for this to work. Top shelf will be your brightest, of course, and then I am moving progressively toward metalness as I go down the rack of shelves. I adjust shininess at each step to try to maintain continuity of materials appearance. The bottom shelf is quite a ways toward metal, which renders it darker because under our scenario, less light is reaching that bottom shelf. However, because we've taken care to adjust for materials, all the shelves still look like wood. So there you have various ways you can adjust materials to aid in scene lighting under various scenarios. This doesn't work under every circumstance, but I think you'll find it can apply to a lot of situations. I'm working on a new video about trading gameplay thermo for graphics thermo and vice versa. Expect that in the next couple of weeks. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you in the Dreamiverse.